Football, football, I'm Chad Hooten at War Memorial Stadium, where the Cabot Panthers have played the past two Decembers for the Class 5A state championship. Cabot lost both of the games last year to J.A. Fair and the year before to Fort Smith Southside. But Cabot is ranked number two in Hooten's Arkansas football, moving up the polls quickly this season. They improved to 3-0 with a win over Little Rock Catholic on Friday night. And that's where we begin our high school highlights this week. It's Cabot hosting Little Rock Catholic. For the second season in a row, Little Rock Catholic got Cabot's attention only to wither down the stretch. Cabot fullback Marquise Warren fumbled three times Friday, one set up this Catholic score in the second quarter. It's Jeff Mickle bowling over for a 6-0 Catholic lead. On the final play of the first half, though, Cabot kicker John Jensen, this is the guy who kicked the game winner against Fair last Friday. He hits his 31-yarder, that cuts the Catholic lead in half, and Cabot goes on to survive six turnovers and come back and win in the second half. Final score, Cabot 24, Catholic 6. Cabot has won 28 of its past 31 games. Lay your ears back and play as hard as you can. We've told you always, a football game is 48 minutes, ebb and flow. Hey, you can't get too excited when it's going our way, and you can't get too down when it's not going away. Make a play. We got some young men here, our playmakers. Tonight, you're going to have to make plays. Okay? The guys we're counting on have got to make plays for us. Got to make plays. You got a lot of people out there believe in you. Let's go do it. Let's go surprise them. Let's go. That's Middleton Raider head coach Darrell Dover trying to get his Raiders ready for the crosstown rival Jonesboro Golden Hurricane at Indian Stadium on the campus of ASU Friday night. But the Class 5A Hurricane had a little trouble with 4A Nettleton. Jonesboro quarterback Joe Hug completed five of five passes, including touchdown tosses to this guy, two of them. That's Anthony Anderson hauling in the touchdown pass. Sugg and Anderson combined for 153 yards and two more touchdowns on the night. Jonesboro also had 293 yards rushing. The Hurricane has some offense this season. Jonesboro beats Nettleton 34-7. Next week, Jonesboro plays at Forest City, a team you will see in just a few minutes on Hooton's Arkansas football. North Pulaski has not won a game since its season opener last year, but they were impressive in their opening drive Friday night against Sylvan Hills. North Pulaski went 70 yards in just four plays. Roderick Smith did the bulk of the work, carrying for 11, 23, and 16 yards to set up M.C. Johnson on this sweet play for the touchdown, and the Falcons surprised Sylvan Hills early with a 6-0 lead. But the Bears would come back quickly. On their first possession, Hooton's preseason Sonic Super Team quarterback Josh Hum finds long, tall Levi Roy down the sidelines for this 50-yard touchdown that tied it at 6. Hum would hit Roy later on the same play for another touchdown, and the Bears would go on to annihilate North Pulaski 53-19. Next week, Sylvan Hills plays undefeated Jacksonville. Uh -huh. The first two weeks of the season, North Little Rock was crushed by Cabot and El Dorado and lost a couple of its top players in the process. Well, just when you think the Charging Wildcats are DOA, they step up in a big way. Friday night against Mighty Pine Bluff, the Charging Wildcats were explosive on offense. Quarterback Mark Wallace passed for 118 yards. Right here, he hands it to JBN Johnson, who rushed for 131 yards and two touchdowns, including this 11-yard run that put North Little Rock up 21 to nothing in the third quarter. Never say North Little Rock can't kill a giant. The Charging Wildcats won at Springdale in last year's playoffs and beat Pine Bluff Friday night. Final score, North Little Rock 28, Pine Bluff 8. Team. That the walls would fall, but he walked up that hill to the Mount of Jericho to see what would happen. Right. Because something told him to walk up that hill yep. and see what happened. Yep. Yep. Run! 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 He took that journey and he walked up that hill and he walked around the Mount of, he walked around the walls of Jericho seven times. Seven times. Seven times. Seven times. Seven times. And on that seventh time, he heard something. You know what he heard? Wow. Oh, what was that, bro? He heard that bell ringing! Yeah! That's Sheridan's new coach, Billy Dawson, getting his Yellow Jackets ready to ring Hot Springs' bell Friday night. Sheridan's Diamond T was a thing of beauty early on. First series right here, number 41. That's Junior Warwick for Sheridan, plowing through the middle, then breaking free for a nice game. A couple of plays later, it's Junior again, this time breaking out of the crowd and scoring for Sheridan. Yellow Jackets lead early, seven to nothing. 
moments later. Hot Springs quarterback Kyle Padgett looking downfield. He's intercepted by Sheridan's Austin Taylor. Austin runs down the sidelines, and Sheridan takes advantage. They can't get in the end zone, but B.J. McCurley hits this 45-yard field goal. It just clears the crossbar, and Sheridan leads 10-0 in the first quarter. Sheridan's defense was stingy, too. The Yellow Jackets allowed Hot Springs just 14 yards rushing all night. In fact, Hot Springs didn't even make a first down until midway through the fourth quarter. Next week, undefeated Sheridan opens conference play at undefeated Bryant. The Hornets are 3-0 for the first time since 1995 and hoping to make the playoffs for the first time since 1985 when their head coach, Darrell Patton, was a senior quarterback at Bryant. Friday night, Bryant celebrated its 50th anniversary of football with 449 yards of offense and a 41-8 win over winless Malvern. Malvern's only score came on this five-yard touchdown pass from Lynn Honeycutt to Michael Berry. That capped an 80-yard drive for Malvern. Then Honeycutt would run in for two extra points, and Malvern led 8-7 early in the second quarter. Bryant then used the razzle-dazzle. Quarterback Derek McCoy pitches to Matt Brown on the reverse. Then Brown pulls up and throws downfield to find sophomore Matt White. They say White is the fastest guy to ever play at Bryant. His catch and run puts Bryant back on top, and the Hornets go on to win big over Malvern. Little Rock Parkview and Class 3A Mariana got together to exchange some ferocious hits Friday night at Quigley Stadium. Actually, Mariana did more of the hitting. Little Rock Parkview has its best team in more than a decade, but this could be the best Mariana team in some time, too. We pick up the action with Mariana quarterback Chris Richardson keeping, and he just gets into the end zone. That puts Mariana up 12-7. to A little later, senior running back Latonio Williams throws his head back and runs wildly for a nice game. Mariana also used number five. That's senior Irvin Hill just pounding away at Parkview. The Patriots got a little something going with junior quarterback Bryson Harris. Two nice runs for Bryson. That sets up Parkview's second touchdown tonight. It's Rodney Evans taking it in from one yard out. That cuts Mariana's lead to five, but the Trojans are for real. They improved a two and one on the year and beat Parkview by a touchdown, 26 to 19. Defending state champion J.A. Fair went to Russellville looking for its first win of the season Friday night. Fair leads seven to nothing early in the second quarter when we pick up the action. This is Russellville quarterback Scott Ray. His pass gets tipped by Magic Jackson at the line and Andre Blackman comes up with a pick for Fair. But the War Eagles offense was sputtering. Poor execution on this option play. Damian Astrid's pitch to Maurice Spain gets nowhere. But Russellville would give it back to Fair. Another interception. This time Chris Harris comes up with a pick for Fair. And then just a little bit later, Ashford finds Gerald Harris downfield for a nice game. That sets up this touchdown. Zach Bradley checks in at quarterback. He pitches it back to Ashford, then runs downfield to catch the touchdown toss just before halftime. Fair goes on to win its first game of the season. Final score, J.A. Fair 33, Russellville 14. Little Rock Central started the year ranked number five by Hooters Arkansas football, and the Tigers have lived up to that ranking so far. Friday night at McClellan. First play of the game, Derek Mason gives it to super sophomore Dedrick Poole. How many times are we going to watch this guy this season take it all the way? We've seen it over and over the first three weeks. He scored four touchdowns against McClellan. This one covered 80 yards. McClellan's first play was a fumble. Central's Brian Williams comes up with it, and the Tigers are back in business. But McClellan's Andreas Davis leads a swarming line defense to stop pull on this play. And Central would have to settle for the field goal. Arturio Rodriguez connects for the Tigers. McClellan answers when Terrell Hammond keeps for a good game here. Then passes deep to Kevin McDuffie. This was a wild one. McClellan led by three late, but Central rallies to remain unbeaten. Final score, Little Rock Central 31, McClellan 27. El Dorado lost to Texarkana, Texas on Friday, but we still think the Wildcats are the top team in Arkansas. Cabot holds on to the number two spot this week in Hooton's Arkansas football. Then it's Van Buren. Rogers is up a couple of spots to number five, followed by Sylvan Hills. And then five teams from the 5A West in a row, starting with Southside at seven, Fayetteville eight, Springdale at number nine, Northside is 10, and Bentonville at number 11. J.A. Fair moves up to number 12. Pine Bluff drops eight spots all the way down to number 13 this week. Jacksonville and Bryant are undefeated. North Little Rock is number 16. Then it's Benton, Blydeville, Texarkana, and Mountain Home rounds out the top 20. Hi, I'm Kim Williams. I'm Taylor Krieger. And I'm Rachel Klein.
Cannons, and we love the Hot Springs High School Trojans and the Arkansas Football! Now more of Hooten's Arkansas Football with high school highlights brought to you by Arkansas Farm Bureau. And we start our Class 4A coverage down at Dumas, where the Bobcats played host to Ashley County's Hamburg Lions. Second quarter action, Hamburg quarterback Richard Martin throws off his heels downfield, and Dumas's Kendrick Griswold is there. Runs underneath it at the 35-yard line, sprints down the sideline, all the way to the Dumas six before Chris Hampton makes the touchdown saving tackle. On the next play, Dumas would score, cutting the lead to 26 to 12, but would get no closer. Hamburg rolls over Dumas, final score. Hamburg 44, Dumas 18. Early last week, Hooten's Arkansas football class 4A expert Perry Grooms tapped Greenwood and Lake Hamilton as our 4A game of the week. And boy, was Perry right. Some fans left this game calling it the best they had ever seen. We pick up the action midway through the fourth quarter with Lake Hamilton leading 20 to 13. But Greenwood has the ball and this is sophomore Anthony Hancock putting on a show. First he finds junior Josh Bell, number 20 with the big game. Then he finds his senior receiver, that's Casey Oliver, all the way down to the 17 yard line with less than a minute to play now. That sets up Hancock, he's gonna keep this time a big game down the left hand side and Greenwood goes back to Bell right in front of you for the touchdown. That cuts Lake Hamilton's lead to one point with 26 seconds left. Now there's no overtime in non-conference games, so Greenwood calls a timeout to set up for the two-point try and the win. And it's no surprise, Greenwood's gonna try to go to Bell again, but there is Lake Hamilton senior Aaron Barlow with the play of the game, breaking up the pass. But it's not over yet. Don't celebrate too soon, Lake Hamilton. Greenwood's Keelan Hunt makes the perfect onside kick, and Heath Spence recovers for the Bulldog. And Greenwood has 22 seconds to work with. Hancock back in the pocket again. He's flushed out, gonna keep it this time. Takes off for a 15 yard gain, and that sets up the dramatic kick. This is Greenwood kicker Matt Mitchell in for a 40 plus yard try, but it falls just short. And Lake Hamilton ends this frustration with the big win over Greenwood. The Wolves had lost three in a row to Greenwood, including twice last year. Final score, Lake Hamilton holds on to win 20 to 19 over Greenwood. Batesville was back at home trying to recover from last week's physical pounding against Harrison by playing host to the Searcy Lions. Batesville's John Wackerly is a fine football player located right here on the keeper. A little bit later, Wack goes to the air. This is Gordon Buchanan hauling in the touchdown pass from Wackerly, and Marcus Meadows adds a two-point conversion. Batesville leads Searcy early, 8-0. A little bit later, Batesville's Josh Brewer would kick a field goal for the Pioneers but it was all Searcy the rest of the way. Adam Rutledge rushed for 108 yards and threw a halfback touchdown pass. Searcy goes on to win this game and the Lions get it done at Batesville by popping the Pioneers 21 to 11. Batesville's winless, Searcy is two and one with confidence heading into 4A West play. The Lions will need all that confidence and more. They play a very mad Greenwood team next week on the road. In Newport, the Greyhounds played Class 5A Forest City. But stepping up in classification was no problem for Newport again. Two weeks ago, the Hounds handed it to Jonesboro. Friday night, Forest City was no match for Newport, even without running back Richard Greer out for the Greyhounds. Forest City's quarterback Darwin Sane was a bright spot for the Mustangs. Right here, some nifty work by Sane on the option pitch to Percy Williams. Then Swain throws the fly to junior Kendrick Wilson for a Forest City touchdown. On the two-point try, Sane drops the snap but picks it up and runs it in for the two-point conversion, but it was not enough. Newport wins big over Forest City, 42 to 21. Next week, the Greyhounds play host to number one, Osceola. Osceola's coming to town, that's always, it's gonna be crowded. I don't know, O-line keeps on playing like they are and defense will be fine, I think. We'll see what we made of. Osceola had the week off to prepare for Newport. The Seminoles have been ranked number one all year by Hooton's Arkansas football. Harrison, Wynn, and Newport are undefeated. Alma won its first game Friday and is at number five. Then it's Magnolia, Watson Chapel.
on more high school highlights brought to you by First Security Bank Corps on Newton's Arkansas football. In Class 3A, the Lono Jackrabbits and Pulaski Academy Bruins have developed a bit of a rivalry over the past few years. Friday night, the Rabbits were in Little Rock for a sloppy game that included 31 penalties and lasted more than three hours. On the first play of the game, nothing sloppy about this. Zach Wadu hands off to Wilbert Wilkerson, and look at Wilbert go. 53 yards, and Lono leads 6 to nothing, just like that. PA comes right back, though. Isaac Smith throwing downfield. That's Brandon Hudson for a big game before getting hit big time by Lono's Chad Wise. Then Smith hits Bryce Morgan for a 27-yard touchdown. P.J. Hickey kicks the extra point, and PA leads 7-6. Lono's defense did have its moments, though. Alex Hunter and Raymond Hatton team up to sack Smith here. Then Lono takes the lead for good with Hatton up the middle. Then Hatton again, two times right after you ask the academy. Just before Wadu finds E.J. Jones down to the one-yard line with a big pass play. That's all Wilbert needs. He will do the rest from one yard out, and Lone Oak would lead the rest of the way. Holding off Pulaski Academy at the end, final score, Lone Oak 36, Pulaski Academy 29. <laughs> Durden was glad to see Hooton's Arkansas football Friday night, and we were glad to be there for the Go Devils and Prescott, a good old Southwest Arkansas rivalry. Gurdon got things going on the opening kickoff. It's Rashawn Hobson going all the way for the score, and Gurdon is on top seconds into the ball game. <laughs> Prescott comes right back. There's always a big crowd and lots of good food down at McGee, truly one of Arkansas's better football towns. McGee fans love their owls and their tailgating. Well, it's a tradition that we kind of started by accident. We, we travel to a lot of places where there are not a lot of restaurants, and uh, so we started kind of eating on the road, and it's caught on, and we try to have a, a tailgate party to kick off our home season every year, uh, to kick off every year in the playoffs, and we, we basically eat every week on the road. We usually have 60, 70 people. After the good food, there was good football. McGee playing host to Crossett, and it was the visitor, sophomore running back Bruce Richmond right here for Crossett, playing for good yardage up the middle. But make no mistake, the man of the night was Lenore Bailey for McGee. Gets a short gain right here, but finished with 280 yards and two touchdowns. His running mate, Leroy Hood, fakes everybody out on this fake punt, going 45 yards all the way down to the cross at 20. That's the kind of night it was for McGee. The Owls roll, stepping up in classification to beat Crossett. Final score, McGee 26, Crossett 9. BB played host to Bologna Friday night, looking for its first one of the season, but it would not happen. Bologna gets the nice kick return with Shane Coffin here first. Then it's Bologna quarterback Chad Roller tossing it to Coffin, who carries it in for a score, and Bologna goes on to win, drops BB 34-30. Down in Star City, the Bulldogs played host to the Dragons from DeWitt, and here's DeWitt's quarterback. That's Chris Allen trying the pitch, but his little fake doesn't work on Star City's Jeff Furneaux. He doesn't buy the fake, causes the fumble, and the Bulldogs go to work. This is number 30, Dante Carthen, running over DeWitt's defense for the score. Dante would run for 193 yards on the night. DeWitt comes back with Allen this time, finding Josh Bronson here for the nice game. Then Allen tosses the screen to sophomore Chase Bell. But Star City would end this DeWitt drive when Perno intercepts Allen. That finishes off DeWitt, and Star City wins it 28 to 14. Tell me about that play. Well, I knew y'all was here, so I was just going to try to get on TV. <laughs> yeah, that won't happen again unless y'all are here. We're just manning up and letting two go deep. Knew that was going to pass, and, you know, he just threw it up for grabs, and they come down with Coach. In Class 2A, Boxside has been ranked number three all year by Hooton's Arkansas football. And Friday night, the Miners played host to Mount Ida in a 5AA South matchup. This one got started early because all the teams in the 5AA South voted to start their games 20 minutes early this season for some extra media coverage, maybe. So here you go, Boxside. Highlights in the daylight. This is Boxside junior quarterback Charlie Lawrence handing off to junior Brian Mathis for an early Boxside lead. Then Lawrence passes to senior John McWilliams for another big game. But on the next play, Mount Ida's Will Brakefield intercepts Lawrence. 
It wouldn't matter, though. Two plays later, Mount Ida would fumble it right back to box site, and the Miners go on to shut out Mount Ida, 27 to nothing. It looks like it was biker night for the Bison on Friday. These guys made a couple of trips around the track before Carlisle started running circles around Pulaski Robinson. Griffin Gallagher gets airtime every week on Hooton's Arkansas football. He returned this interception 50 yards for Carlisle's first touchdown. Gallagher would finish the night with 152 yards and two more touchdowns, and Carlisle cruises by Robinson. Final score, the Bison 34, Robinson 8. The Durex Outlaws rode into Bismarck looking for a fight Friday night, and that's exactly what they got from the Lions. Bismarck's lead is 21-7 in the third quarter when Marcus Brawley returns this interception for another Bismarck touchdown. Bismarck quarterback Chase Myers threw for 233 yards on the night and played well on defense too. Here he is getting this interception. Bismarck sends Dirks packing with a 35-13 win. Next week, Bismarck begins play in the 7 AAA Conference at Prescott. Shallow Christian is still on top in Hooton's Arkansas football double-A poll. Then it's Hector Boxite, Harding Academy, and Carlisle. That's the same top five as a week ago. All of them are undefeated. Charleston is number six. Then it's Junction City moving up to number seven. Clarendon is at eight. Then it's Barton and Mark Tree. The second ten starts with Mineral Springs, Greenland, Gurdon, Foreman, and Ryzen drops to number 15. Desarc is at 16. Mayflower 17. Then it's Mansfield, Smackover, and the Murfreesboro Rattlers at number 20. The strength of the making it happen every day. And welcome back to Hooton's Arkansas Football. Next week, Hooton's Arkansas Football will not be shown due to NBC's live golf coverage of the Ryder Cup. So in two weeks, we will be back with more highlights from the Razorbacks, high school football, and uh, here is a look at some of the high school games we'll be covering in two weeks on Hooton's Arkansas Football. We will make a trip up I-40 with stops at Russellville, Dardanelle, and Clarksville. Also in two weeks, Hooton's Arkansas football will be in Garland County at Lakeside, Hot Springs High, and at Lake Hamilton again. Also, Hooton's Arkansas football in two weeks will be there when Arkansas Baptist plays at Marshall, plus Greenland at Clinton. And we will see the Sheridan Yellow Jackets again, this time at Benton, along with Pine Bluff at Bryant and Mountain Pine at Boxside. That's it coming up in two weeks on Hooton's Arkansas football. FCA is growing its staff to reach every community in America. Thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football today. We will be back in two weeks. Next week it's the Ryder Cup, but in two weeks Hooton's Arkansas Football returns to its regular time at 1 o'clock two weeks from today. And we hope to see you then on Hooton's Arkansas Football. come true and this has been my dream <laughs> 28 time bluff 18 that the walls would fall but he walked up that hill to the Mount of Jericho to see what would happen right. because something told him to walk up that hill yep. yeah and see what happened Yes. Run! 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 He took that journey and he walked up that hill and he walked around the mountain, he walked around the walls of Jericho seven times. Seven times. Seven times. Seven times. Seven times. Seven times. And on that seventh time, mm. he heard something. You know what he heard? Woo! Walls. Oh, what was that, Brian? He heard that bell ring! Yeah! That's Sheridan's new coach, Billy Dawson, getting his Yellow Jackets ready to ring Hot Springs' bell Friday night. Sheridan's Diamond Tee was a thing of beauty early on. First series right here, number 41. That's Junior Warwick for Sheridan, plowing through the middle, then breaking free for a nice game. A couple of plays later, it's Junior again, this time breaking out of the crowd and scoring for Sheridan.